This episode is dedicated to keeping up with the Kardashians. 2007 to 2021. Almost gone, but never forgotten. You're listening to The Gal Code, hosted by me, Rob Gartland. And me, Bibi Bagnall. Thanks for joining us for this special episode to break down the headlines. Anyone for a bonus episode? Woo! (laughs) (laughs) Fuck off, Kim. (laughs) Hey, Bibi. Hi. Little Sunday surprise. Cheeky surprise. Oh my God, we are here on a Sunday. I mean, we couldn't not comment. Honestly, there's so much that's happened this week. It's actually been wild. It's insane. Yeah. We're pieing off our pit and peak. We're saying see ya to the Gal Code rules. And we're focusing on breaking down the headlines. But first... I just need to discuss. Whilst I've got Meg here, Mm -hmm. we need to get Meg on the podcast to tell this story. Okay, the the infamous poo story. The infamous poo story. Okay. As we are dropping this bonus episode of The Gal Code. So my housemate Meg, you know, she gets she gets her shout outs, doesn't she? So many. Bear in mind, how long had I known you when you told me this story? Oh, a week. like a week. A week. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, I, I honestly think it is like the funniest story I have. Don't big it up too much. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny though. <laughs> and I was like, I need to get you on the podcast to tell the poo story. Okay. And you, you just won't come on, will you? Do you know, I don't like the sound of my own voice, so I won't be listening to this podcast. I'll promote it, but no. Yeah, on Spotify and Apple Apple Podcasts. Yeah, she knows. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> Number one supporter. So on this podcast, we have been quite open about our lavatory and bowel situations. So let's see this story that I've been told a lot about. <laughs> so essentially, I was working at a large department store in the UK. I won't say <laughs> what it's called. I was walking the... The floor, floor. you know, checking for all the customers, making sure everyone's okay. And when you do this, you have to wear a radio. And I was walking one day and I heard on the radio quite a panicked call out (laughs) from someone saying, can anyone get hold of the cleaners? I need need, the cleaners on here. I need the cleaners and I need them. I need them right now. And so I like replied and was like, like, call 555. Like the cleaners have a phone. Like, Mm -hmm. why are you radioing? And they call back, like, I've called them, and it's immediate. Like, I need it now. They didn't answer the phone. So I was like, right, where are you? By the middle of the store. So I I went and found them, and they were like, something awful has happened. And I was like, what? And I was like, fuck me. It (laughs) fucking reeks. What is that smell? And they were like, this is the issue. There's poo. And I was like... (laughs) Where? I was like, has there been a leak? Like, has something gone wrong? Like, are the pipes exploded? And they were like, no, no, like, someone's shit themselves. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like, where is it? And they were like, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean it's everywhere? It's a massive shop, right? So I asked her what happened. And what happened was this lady had come, I'd run in to reception, like, to the front desk bit, basically. The experience desk. The experience desk. Oh! <laughs> Close. <laughs> um, come to the experience desk and say, where are the toilets? And so it was like, oh, they're just upstairs. And they're really annoying, right? The toilets are like upstairs. It's a maze away. Up the escalators, right at the back of the store. So apparently she was like, okay, and ran off. And they were like, gosh, she was a bit rude. Anyway, she basically didn't even make it to the escalators. She started <laughs> shitting herself at the bottom of the escalators, poo running down her legs. It basically went all up the escalators. The poor woman, I don't know why she didn't go up the stairs, but the escalators were going round and round with her poo on it. <laughs> <laughs> like a cycle of shit. Oh, my God. But no, she ran up the escalator, she ran through where all of, where all of the like dishwashers and like ovens and stuff were, ran past the, like it, I think it must have been like a weekend, so it was busy. So she gets like she like ran and obviously no one could stop her because she, she was a whippet. She was a whippet. She was gone. She was gone. <laughs> the only thing that was left of her was the shit on the floor. Like it was unreal. So she like locked herself in the disabled toilets. Oh my god. Bless her. Um, and and that's when basically we got the call about the um, um, 
about the cleaner because someone was like, right, there's shit all over the floor. What are we supposed to do? And as this was happening, like more and more partners were coming out and they, oh no, there's another drop. Partners uh, were coming out and they were like, they were like, oh my God, is there a, is a dog food? Because it was like maybe a week after we said that we could have dogs in the shop again. Yeah. So that like, like there was dogs in the shop all the time, and so everyone kept saying, "Oh, like a dog shit on the floor, like a dog shit on the floor." And I was like, "Oh my god, like, this isn't a dog!" Like, and the poor woman still in the bloody toilet. So two of the two of the girls who worked on the um, like washing machines and stuff had to like go get like fresh towels, oh. have some knickers, some trousers oh. from downstairs, and had to go and help her. Like, And they were just feeding it through this door and they said it was the most disgusting thing because she was like opening it and just wafts of shit were coming out. And they were so lovely to her, bless them. They were really good, but like, oh my God, this poor lady. And then we eventually got hold of the cleaners and they started attacking it from either end to like meet in the middle and try and sort out the escalator. Oh gosh. <laughs> but it was just getting progressively worse because every Everyone would come out from their breaks or like new customers would come in and you'd hear everyone, everyone would scrunch up their faces and they'd just go, all oh, that smell. And the, just the worst thing because the woman had to just obviously sort herself out and then walk through the shop. I would never leave. Yeah. Well, thank God those partners were there to save her. Well, thank God those <coughs> partners were there. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely an ordeal. So many poo stories from that John Lewis, That's... honestly. Oh! <laughs> and we dropped the name. <laughs> oh, shit, I said John Lewis. Oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I won't tell you which branch it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, guys. This poo story's really made me need a poo. Go and, go and have I a poo. Go, go and have a poo. I was thinking that before. I was go like, and I it out. just a fart. And, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for coming on our podcast and telling us on our bonus episode. Like what you hear or just like us and want to be supportive, head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a five-star review and hit that subscribe button. It so matters in helping us get this thing off the ground. So go and do it. Can you actually cope with that story? Um, It's made me feel so much better about myself and net, like, shitting myself on the South Bank. Thank God it wasn't near an escalator that they would then revolve, rotate and repeat itself <laughs> for the entire day. <laughs> Like, it could have been so much no, worse. No, it could have been way worse. 25 million times worse. A revolving cycle of shit is not ideal. <laughs> do you know what I do think, though? What? Okay, so, basically, I do have a poo story that I've kept off the podcast. Oh. And now that you've said yours, mm -hmm. Meg has said hers. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Meg even said to me, she was like, Bibi, if I pooed myself, like, you would put it on the podcast. So the yeah. fact that you pooed yourself and you are keeping it off the podcast. It's only fair. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so basically, you know last week when I had stomach bug? Mm-hmm. So Alex and I had gone out on our lunch break to go sign up to the gym. Nice. And we were walking down the street, and, like, something was up with my tummy. You could just feel it. You could just feel it. And I was like, mm. God, Alex, my tummy's just not okay, you know. Like, I really think something's wrong. And I did a little fart, and I was like, okay, it could be wind. <laughs> walking down the street. My street, you, you know my street. It's a long it's street. It's a long street. Yeah. We're about halfway through. And basically, I go to do another fart, and it's not a fart. It... And because we've been to the gym, I wanted to look sporty, so I'm in, like, tight gym leggings. Nice. And I just turned to Al, who was chatting away from me, and I thought, Al, I just shit myself <laughs> in the street. She's shitting in the street. She's and shitting in the street. I just don't know what to do. And like, I am like almost crying. I've just booed myself. I thought it was a fart. It happens, and it, wasn't. it happens at the most vulnerable moment. But the thing is, we can't stop laughing. And I'm like, the more we laugh, the more it's coming out. And it wouldn't stop coming because we couldn't stop laughing. Meg is still here. Can I pass the mic to Meg to tell the story of what happened? So I was working from home. I think I just had my lunch. And this massive bang, like massive bang, <laughs> comes on the door. Because like, we did take our keys because we were no. like, oh, it's fine. We'll, Meg will let us Meg's in. Home. So I was like fucking rude, like stupid, like postman or whatever. Like I could go to the door and I literally see like a hand. We've got glass front door. So you, I just saw like a handprint on the front. And then I just see like Alex like keeled over <laughs> laughing. And then I just hear Bibi going, I'm shit. Myself. So I like <laughs> unlock the door and I'm like, what's going on? Before I can open it properly, Bibi pelts it through and runs upstairs. And Alex can't fucking speak at this point. You know, she's just laughing and laughing. And I'm like, what has just happened? I'm in shock. Oh my gosh. It, it gave me laughs for 
a good few hours afterwards. It was these leggings that I'm wearing now. Obviously, they've been washed. Oh, wash. Thank you so much for bringing them to the <laughs> podcast today. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so do you feel like you've got that off your chest? I do, because I do feel like I was being a bad podcaster by letting everyone else leave their shit stories, and I just wanted to brush mine under the carpet. It wasn't getting brushed. It was all over the street. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that was my headline. Should we discuss the other headlines? Yeah, we'll be back to break down the headlines post-poo stories. <laughs> so, we are back on this little Sunday to break down the headlines from this insane week. Where do we even start? Well, I've got a list. Okay. So should we roll down and we'll take our opinions on it for yeah. break down the headlines too? So, I mean, it was a toss-up. Do we go showbiz? Do we go real world? And then I realised it's us. Keep it going with the Kardashians. <laughs> it's officially over. 20 seasons, several spin-offs, and the famous family are now saying goodbye, supposedly because E refused to give them a raise. Really? Yeah, that's the rumour mill. Mm. How do we feel about this? Basically, Chris Jenner was doing like a radio interview for Iron Seacrest. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, so why is it ending? And she was like, you know, like we just thought like 20 was like a good number to end on. Mm -hmm. You know, like 2020, like 20 seasons. But then like it ends in 2021. So that doesn't actually make sense. I... So something's definitely happened. Yeah. It was not supposed to end. So supposedly they asked for more money. Mm -hmm. And then they were told no because the ratings have dwindled. Yeah. I do think when I think back to keeping up with the Kardashians, my favorite moments were from the early seasons. Same. I remember when Kim got a perfume deal and called it dashing. Yeah. And the other two girls went wild and mad. And there was this whole episode where they're all kicking off and screaming at each other and hitting each other. That was peak television. Do you know what my favourites were? The early on holiday episodes. Mm. And do you remember when like Kim, Kylie and Kendall would make music videos in yeah. the pool <laughs> when they went to like the Philippines or they something? They did like E.T. by Katy Perry. And yeah. they're like, you're so hypnotising. Like, and it's a terrible video. And yeah. like, they proper went in on the VK episodes, like yeah. Bora Bora, iconic. Do you remember the skiing one when um, they, Chris throws Kim's Blackberry off the top of the stairs onto the floor and yes. it smashes? And then she goes to the bus <laughs> service um, place to go home and leave the family trip. So funny. <laughs> Just think the Kardashian era is over. Well, I kind of feel like there'll be a Netflix deal. Oh, I thought originally they wanted to do something on Netflix, or maybe they wanted to go down that route, but they were tied into a long contract with E. Supposedly Chris is going to be a real housewife for Beverly Hills. That would be brilliant. And someone came up with the tagline, like, I once managed a family, now I just manage my diamond, because they all hold the diamonds. Oh, And I was like, I'm so down God. for it. I'm because here for that. Have you watched Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Here and there. So Denise Richards has just quit I after she was that. accused of having a lesbian relationship with Brandy Glanville. Yeah. And it was a big storm, so they do need new Beverly Hills housewives. Oh, my God. But Yolanda's not in it, is it? No. It could be like the mums of the supermodels. I wouldn't even classify Kendall Jenner as a supermodel. She's a model. She's a model. Nice. Gigi Hadid is a supermodel. Kendall is a model. I would say Naomi Campbell oh, is a yeah, supermodel. Oh, yeah, that's true, actually. I don't yeah. think anyone these days is a supermodel. Because mm. it's just also everyone's a model these days. I'm a model. Look at my Instagram. Oh, that, That's like saying I'm a model because I did one photo shoot for a brand. You are? I've done a lot more, but fine. We're all freelance influencers and models these days. <laughs> Hey-ho. Um, okay, so it's official. The new lockdown rules are about to start. You've got just a few hours, everyone. Just a few hours. Hug 30 of your family and friends. <laughs> this time tomorrow, you've got to pick your top five. Don't be a dick. Don't have more than six. How do you feel about it? I'm not that bothered, to be honest. No. Actually, no, do you know what it is? It is awkward because me and my friends are in a friendship group of seven. <sighs> but to be honest, we're never all free at the same time anyway to plan something together. It's going to be an awkward occasion now where you all are free and it's going to be a pick and choose. I think with this, the only problem is that every messaging towards coronavirus has been so bloody confusing and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Matt Hancock should not be allowed on television. No. He should not be no. allowed to do interviews. He has no capabilities whatsoever to make sense in front of a camera on Sky no. News. Do you know what? We were listening and they had like news beat and they were like interviewing Matt Hancock and he was just kind of like dodging the questions mm. and I was like, it's so annoying. But I didn't understand is before they brought this rule into place, because obviously he came out and he blamed young people. Yeah, which annoys me so much. So much. Give everyone £10 off their Nandos, but don't expect them to go. Come on. 
they had this whole feature about how young people, because he said they weren't following the rules, and they were asking young people, like, what do you think the rules are? And I was like, do you know what? I don't understand the rules, because at the time it said you shouldn't really meet with more than six people in mm. your household. And then it was like, but gatherings of more than 30 are banned. So then I'm like, well, then technically you can have over six for 30 then. I'm like, that honest, doesn't make sense. I never knew I was allowed to meet 30 people. No, me neither. And there's other guidance, like, wear a mask and only do doggy. Like, there's things that they're coming out with. But exactly, at the same time... don't have sex, but then, oh, here's guidance if you want to yeah. have sex. Pop your mask on, only do doggy, avoid facial contact and moisture. Ew. Ew. <laughs> so gross. gross. But, like, I got really angry at the blaming the youths because yeah. I'm not being funny. The majority of the people who work in retail, bars, restaurants, etc., are young people. Absolutely. And also, You're the one exposing them to this. Of course. And encouraging people to go to the places and then being surprised that the rate's gone up. Are you dumb? And a lot of young people, I feel like, live paycheck to paycheck and have to go out and make a living and actually don't have the pleasure of working from home, etc., because they're building careers. Yeah. So I don't, I don't appreciate being blamed for it. I've tried my very best. Absolutely. Um, Paris Hilton... Mm -hmm. the infamous queen, the original OG, is launching a documentary that comes out tomorrow on YouTube <gasps> detailing the truth behind her life, the persona she's played for years and revealing a big secret. Do you know what? I'm all for it. Love Paris Hilton. And she's had a lot of press around this. I remember mm. reading her interview a couple of weeks ago in the Sunday Times style. I've always liked Paris Hilton from yeah. The Simple Life. Did you watch The Simple Life? You no, know, I actually didn't. Oh my God, The Simple Life was that shit. I would love it though. And then I watched Paris Hilton's British Best Friend. <gasps> I really wanted that to be me, but it wasn't. Oh my God, that program was so good. What was it? She'd be like, TTYN, talk to you another. Yeah. <laughs> TTYN. Stars Are Blind was the first single I ever bought from Woolworths. <laughs> Even though stars are blind. The real love, baby, I'll show you my eyes. You can make it up. Yep. Oh, what a bop. Oh, um, yeah. No, she's great. I'm here for Paris So you'll be tuning in. I feel like um, I would watch that over Keeping Up With The Kardashians. I like a documentary. And YouTube actually have a history of releasing really good documentaries because they had the Demi Lovato one. I didn't watch that, but I did watch the Ariana Grande one. So the Demi Lovato one was her basically saying, like, this is the longest time and first time I've ever sat down for an interview like this when I wasn't on coke but it yeah. was just before she had the um the near death situation uh, yeah, I, so forgot about I that. think there's a sequel coming now this one's been quite big in the press this week so what is it diversity performed a dance yeah a dance a oh, dance a dance a, a dance. dance to honor 2020 the Black Lives Matter movement George everything Floyd, we've been going yeah. through it has become the second most complained performance or TV moment in the last decade. Which is ridiculous. It's had nearly 10,000 complaints. Have you watched it? I thought it was incredible. Yeah, it's so good. And it, it's only second to Roxanne Pallet pretending that Ryan Thomas um, <gasps> tried to hit her on Severity Big Brother, which was actually a really As bad thing. As if people would put racism. So that's number two, this, this situation. And I think, wow. for me, it just kind of shows that... This country is nowhere near as advanced as we would like to believe it is. No, and do you know what it is? Do you remember when Stormzy said the UK was racist and then everyone yeah. kicked off about it? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but the UK is racist. The UK is everything is. Yeah. In the heart of it, it really is. And I think when you live in cities, you kind of get used to everyone being a little bit more open. Especially in London. Yeah, because I'm so used to being around a such a diverse group of people. This is the thing, I was telling someone from work who's like lived in London their whole life that when I moved to Newcastle, like the amount of black people in school. Yeah. What kind of sad losers are ringing Ofcom to complain about a television show? Do you know what it is? I've Get been meaning to complain about my old energy supplier to Ofgem <laughs> for so many times, like literally because they keep turning me this bill for £400 when it just doesn't exist. And I'm thinking, I can't even be bothered to do that. And I'm apparently owing someone £400. Like, imagine going out of your way to complain about this. To Ofcom. To Ofcom. It's like, the kind of mums net people, I feel. Yeah. I mean, what are they <laughs> complaining about? Like, what's wrong? It's They said it was a political message that was inappropriate. It's not inappropriate. It's not inappropriate at all. It's Someone's an, rights it's, is not inappropriate. It's an important message that needed to be seen. Yeah. It drove me insane. And well done to Diversity for doing that and using that huge platform. And welcome, well done for ITV for standing by it and letting yeah. them do it. And Absolutely. Yeah. It's a must. And then Strictly Come Dancing... Will oh, yeah. launch their first ever same sex pairing. I thought they had already. Oh, that Dancing was Dancing on, on Ice. Ice. So Dancing on Ice had H from Steps, Whoop Steps, um, <laughs> come out with an all male partnership. Oh, and now yeah. Strictly Come Dancing, which is a much bigger show, yeah. have decided that Nicola Adams, yeah. she's an Olympian, mm -hmm. will be in an all female couple for Ooh. this show's launch. I just think it's important to remove the the sort of stigma on it and just let yeah. people do it. Like, I don't think it should be announced as this all, this groundbreaking thing. We're in 2020. 
It's the norm. But I don't think she'll win. Who? Um... I'm being honest. I do not think that yeah. this country will ever vote for a same-sex partnership to win. It's gross. It's but I think if you look at what happened with diversity and all the complaints, there's mm. I, and especially when Strictly Come Dancing, it's an older crowd. And that's why I also think women sometimes don't win because the people who vote are like women voting for cute men. And I don't think that kind of audience is ready to vote for... It's all the middle-aged people who would complain. Who would? Mm -hmm. So we have Strictly Come Dancing. The <gasps> US get Dancing with the Stars. Carol Baskin is competing in Dancing with the Stars and Chris Shell from Selling Sunset. Obsessed with this. Carol Baskin. Now, Carol Baskin. I'm sorry, Kill if she does husband. not perform Baskin. to Eye of the Tiger, <laughs> Raw by Katy Perry, she's a maniac, maniac <laughs> on the floor. And something about a cage, I'll be very upset. Oh my god, there's just so much you could do with Can't that. Can't wait to see her rumba to Eye of the Tiger. Oh my god, I am gonna I am gonna watch that. I've never watched Dancing with the Stars, but I will watch that. Only on YouTube. Every Monday it'll be on YouTube. Just a bit of Carol. I was watching this interview and it was like, isn't she an alleged murderer? <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah, the alleged Literally, murderer is gonna be. She has to come on, she has to start, so you start the rumba with Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything more 2020 where like an alleged murderer and Netflix star to compete on a dancing I'm, reality show? I'm happy for Chriselle. I'm glad she's got another TV show lined up. Good for Chriselle. Yeah. I mean, she's the one out of all of them I'd want to be doing this opportunity. Yeah, same. And I bet you she's going to look so good in the dresses and all the hair and makeup. Yeah, and Jesse Metcalf's doing it from Desperate Housewives. You know, the fit gardener. No. John Tuck, I must die. <gasps> yeah. Love that. So I'll be keeping up to date with that, I feel. We've got good TV. Just when we thought we were losing hope, just it's when getting we thought. good. So, and then I found some random stories that I thought were fun. You know, a little yeah. bit of weird news. So, a lady yeah. competed on an Australian radio competition called Boyfriend or Daddy. She continued to make out with the man that it found out to be was her father for $1,000. No, that's a really fucked There's up competition. There's a video online. You have to go in and pretend if you're it's your daddy to make them think that it's the opposite <gasps> and then if they guess right then you win why is that a thing that's so backwards so they got on there they weren't convinced so then they made out and then they said they have to be boyfriend and girlfriend and it turned out that, that was her father that's really fucked up should i find the video no i can't i can't that let's makes find sense. the video <laughs> so just for reference now rob is now showing me this clip let's get this up i, I bet there's an advert mm. grammarly you do sort of look like you could be father and daughter. Oh, no. And then people are strangely attracted to... Can I get a zoom to... in? Can I zoom in by yeah. any chance on... Sure. No offence, they look like the weird people who would do this. Let's get oh going. God. Oh, they are yeah. fully kissing. Yeah. Oh, that was a make -out. Oh. It has to be a boyfriend. And, uh, She's looking at him like, come on, let's do it again. <laughs> She's loving it. We've all locked in. This has to be your boyfriend. The things we do for money. This is actually my father. Ew. So proud of herself. Ew, she is like, she enjoyed that though. That's just disgusting. Ew. Hashtag cancel Netflix. Okay, I've actually kept up with this. I'm not cancelling Netflix, but what this show thing is is very disappointing. So there's a movie that came out called Cuties. Mm -hmm. And it began trending after releasing programming, including... Uh, these warnings. Yeah. This movie consists of 11-year-old girls dancing very suggestively. An adult dancer shows her breast at the end of a dance video that two children are watching. A girl watches a female rap music video where naked women role play through dance. A pair of tight leather pants on an 11-year-old girl are forcibly pulled down in the middle of a scuffle. The camera glances at her panty exposed bum. That last one makes me feel sick. Why is that being allowed on a streaming platform where any horrid Tom, Dick, Harry, old, weird, creepy man, whatever, has got access to it with a £5.99 subscription. And you know what annoys me? Why is it females? It's always women. Mm -hmm. I was listening to Radio 1. Obviously, it's what I have on when I'm working. Mm -hmm. And on Newsbeat, they talked about this and they got a person like who'd watched the film to talk about what happens. And they were kind of saying, like, the way they were speaking kind of sounded as if they were siding with Netflix. And it was a man I really, and I was like, do you know shock. what? It's, do it really annoyed me. I was like, yeah, of course a man's going to say that because he is not someone who experiences the type of sexism that women always experience yeah. and the perviness. Like, they just obviously there's elements of it, but it's not the same. It's like it really frustrates me. Basically, I'm going on a bit of a rant here. I saw this video on Twitter, and it was basically this 
girl who'd like walked into a building and this man followed her and she did this thing to divert the man and everyone's like oh my god so clever da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and the account that tweeted it was like you know like we have this channel where we specialize in educating women on self-defense things and i was like sorry i understand we have to educate women but can we just educate men not to be fucking exactly. creeps for one yeah it's always I agree. we're the ones who have to walk home with our keys in between our fingers when i was walking back from wimbledon to the bus stop i had to rope ring meg to mm. be like i'm walking down this road it's really dim and like this jogger this man came up behind me and i absolutely shit myself i was like oh my god and i was like women have to do these things and it's really annoys me that men do not experience the things that women experience. Matt Hancock's comments about that he's made this week about the... He might be homophobic and he might be a misogynist. Misogynist. But he's good at trade. Honestly, so... What do you say? Al was talking to this boy and the boy replied and was like, I kind of can see where he's coming from, like he has a point. And I was like, do you know what it is? Yeah, a boy can think that and be like, yeah, he's got a point because he has never experienced the sexism that women experience. It's and true. I am sick to death of boy. Like, it, it's... I'm going on such a tangent, but I'm just sick of it. Like, it's really, really annoying. Like, boys don't have to experience half the things that we experience. Like, it's... And it's just annoying. Boys don't Matt Hancock is such a twat. Yeah. Boys don't experience <laughs> sexism in that way at all. No. No way at all. I mean, the, obviously, there is experiences with, like, assault, etc. that do happen across genders. Mm -hmm. But on just a day-to-day -day living, living your life, there's no way that a male has experienced what a female experiences. No. Even just the way that power exchanges from the workplace to Being life listened to, to... Yeah, exactly. Honestly. What you have to fight for in general. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, so, are you ready for a little game? Yeah, I feel like we need to brighten it up after that. Okay, we'll be back with our little game. So we are back on this special little bonus episode on a Sunday. And is it a perfect time for a little game? Absolutely. Always for it. So I've created this game. Now I'm going to read out a headline topic, something that's going on. And we're going to say if we're here for it or if we're not here for it. But I've, I've never seen someone so excited about the game so, we've created. But we've got our own special name. So oh, brill. if you like it, it's b -bay. Oh, fuck If you don't me. like it, it's not today. <laughs> If I like it, I'm rob -sessed. If I don't like it, ugh, that's a mess. Yours is so much better like than mine. You fully did me dirty. <laughs> B-Bay. I think B-Bay is good. B-Bay? Like... What am I? Justin Bieber? <laughs> so the first one. The Only Ways Essex is returning tonight for the start of its 10-year anniversary series. Two episodes a week. It's back. Amy Childs is back regular. Are we here for it? B-Bay. So you're, you're vibing it. I'm vibing it. You're going to tune in. It. I love it. Back to two days a week as well. Two days a week. That, yeah. I mean, that is... I just that could be better than this bonus episode. I'm not oh, too sure. I should not know. Sunday and Wednesday, Sunday and Wednesday. Oh, oh my it's god, our we are Tommy. Oh my god. <laughs> well, your preview. Um, I'm Rob Sast. I'm so here for yeah. it. Yeah. Miley Cyrus was knocked off the top spot on iTunes by iconic superstar band Steps. B Bay. I, Miley Cyrus annoys. Me. I actually know that's a lie. The song annoys me. I don't like the you song. You don't like the song. It's overplayed on the radio. It's ruined it for me. I think the song is absolutely one of her best songs she's ever released. No, my favorite is. Um, I'd run away back to the ocean. I'll go back to my dinner. Don't you run away? Oh, really? Yeah, it's like my, one of my favourite depressive songs up there after the Taylor Swift album. Mm, I'm Rob obsessed with it. But what about Miley Cyrus's mullet? Uh, what, she brought that back? Yeah, are you uh, eBay or not today? Not today. Not, not today. today. I, don't, I think it's a vibe. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. <laughs> Her achy, breaky jeans are coming through. <laughs> Rob says, Megan Trainor's announced she's releasing a Christmas album. Not today. <laughs> and I mean, not any, any other day. I hate Megan Trainor. I absolutely cannot stand Why? her. Why? Oh, it's, and do you know what it is? It's just like when she did that song about all about the bass and she's like, and go ahead and tell all your skinny bitches that. And I'm like, fuck off. I imagine if I put in a song, go ahead and tell all your fat bitches that. <laughs> Rude. Stop skinny shaming. You can embrace your body size without shaming other sizes. Megan Trainer, pack it in, bore off. No, Thing not is, today. But Megan Trainer. I do think a Christmas album is the final hurdle of someone's career dying. Mm -hmm. It's like just the Good. end result. Poor Jessie J, she did it. Where's she at? Jessie, my love. Wasn't she like auditioning on The Voice somewhere? She did a U uh, Chinese reality sing competition, which she won. Oh, well done, her. Nice for her. Oh, um, Megan Trainer, I'm Rob Sest. I quite Not and today. and it's original songs. Never has there been an original Christmas song since One More Sleep with Leon Lewis. Ariana Grande. Oh. Santa, tell me. 
Yeah, just a bit of mistletoe. Moving on. Um, <laughs> Gossip Girl is returning with a reboot, set to begin filming this year, featuring a more inclusive cast. Well done. But I'm also not it. today. Not, not, I just don't want them to ruin it because it's not, it's not, it's not got Blair, it's not got Chuck, it's not got Serena, yeah, it's, it's not got people. Nate. Just don't... It's like, you know when they did um, Mean Girls 2? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, I just, it's given me that kind of vibe. Did you ever watch another Cinderella story with Selena Gomez? No. And then they did a Cinderella story Once Upon a Song with Lucy Hale. <gasps> yeah, they're not good movies. No. <laughs> they're not good movies. That's what I just worry that's going to happen with Gossip Girl. I mean, I might watch it, but I just feel like it's not going to... It's you, The thing is, the stuff that happened in Gossip Girl, you could absolutely not have on TV now. No, there's so many so, offensive things. So many offensive things. Even Ivanka mm. Trump's in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, no. Pretty Little Liars is also set to return. <laughs> That's a mess. That's a mess. I'm not here for that mess. I just, I don't know if I could dedicate. <laughs> like, I've, I'm still waiting on my refund for the time I wasted on that just to find out that A was Spencer's twin with a London accent, which wasn't even a London <laughs> accent. I don't want to find out who B is. I don't or want C to find out who C D is. I don't need just to go on and on. Like, let's... Pause the alphabet, Marlene, give it up, close the book, cash in your checks and head off. Love Island USA has taken the place of the UK one. Have you been watching it? No, I didn't, I didn't even it. know it was there. Yeah, ITV2 are airing it every single day. That's a mess I feel like me. that's not popped off at all. Not at all. Oh, maybe I will watch that. I don't know. Mm. Mm. I haven't missed Love Island this year, to be honest. No. I mean, is, it, is it inclusive? No. Well, that's um, do you know what it Love is? Love Island's could, never inclusive. No, I feel like I would only really be, I think, at this rate, be bothered if by Love Island if they had a diverse cast and they were inclusive of all sexualities. Yeah, that's the thing. And body shapes. And I'm sorry, but a gay Love Island would pop off. That it shit would be, be scandalous. bitchy. scandalous. Yeah. And also, everyone could get with everyone. Imagine, yeah. it's not even just six and six, it would be ten. Yeah. Ooh. Zac Efron met his new girlfriend when she was a server at a restaurant. Oh. Yeah. I'm, oh, my God. I'm obsessed with that. Be Bay. Yeah. Oh my God, there's hope. That's my business. You can meet anyone anywhere. Oh, wow. And finally, a takeaway in Cumbria has launched the Two Stone Burger Challenge Ew. featuring 24 pounds of beef, a mountain of cheese, 20 slices of bacon. It's 56 Ew. times the normal burger size and 32,000 calories. And it's free if you finish it in then an hour That's or 30 disgusting. pounds. That's a mess. You know, I wouldn't, like, I've, I've just got so many questions with that Basque Pescatarian that actually makes me feel disgusting. Who wants to eat that? Do you know what, food should be... And do you know what, that's just greed at that point. That is greed. Do you know what, it's that's... just gluttony. That's just disgusting. Yeah, not for, for me. For 30 quid. Do you know what, like, what could 30, I get for 30 quid? 32,000 calories. I could get 15 bags of Colin the Caterpillar faces, and I tell you what, I'd much rather eat those mm. one after the other then than that. a 32,000 calorie beef burger. Like, do you want... You may as well just jump in front of a bus. Like... <laughs> Why would you do Just that to your body? Just yourself with grease. Why? Like, why? I just have so many questions. Why? Yeah. Should we leave it on that? Yeah, let's leave it on that. Overall, the world's a little bit of a mess. Yeah. But we're all obsessed. We're all obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this Sunday for our bonus episode. And we will see you this Wednesday. It's a double bill Whoop. for our next episode, Irrational Fears. Eek. See you then. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.